In this Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 video, we're going to be talking about Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. If you haven't heard by now, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 was announced by Warhorse just a little bit ago, and it's scheduled to release sometime later this year, and we don't have a lot of information currently on when that is. And given that they did not provide a release date, I think it's safe to say that we're looking at either Q3 or Q4 this year. In this video, we're going to be talking about everything we know about Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. We had a presentation from Warhorse a little over a week ago where we got to see some of the game and the presentation that you're going to see here on screen. But also, we got an exclusive interview with the lead game designer for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. And we're going to be going through some of the information in this video that we learned from that interview that you will not find anywhere else. So Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 takes place after the events of Kingdom Come Deliverance 1. You're still going to be playing as Henry, you're going to be picking up his story, and you're going to be moving to a couple new areas of the game. There are two maps in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. There is the Trotsky area, which is sort of a large countryside area with a huge castle in the dead center. And you're going to have a second map, which is Kutenberg, which is a very large urban city that is a city based around silver mining. So it's very rich. There are a lot of traders in it. This is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of NPCs in this city. And a couple things I want to mention about this is that Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, in terms of land area, is supposedly about twice the size of the first game. So you're going to have double the area to explore. I know exploration in Kingdom Come Deliverance 1 was one of the best parts of the game, just getting lost in the countryside, in the woods, going hunting, just you know having fun, just kind of goofing off, kind of getting away from the questing was a ton of fun in Kingdom Come Deliverance. You're going to have even more of that in this game. And something else I want to mention is that Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 only has two load screens. This is something that Warhorse really wanted to impress upon me. And that's when you load into the game, there's a load screen. And then when you change maps, there's a load screen. Otherwise, there are zero load screens in the whole game. If you go into houses, go into castles, everything like that, there are no other load screens. And the reason there's a load screen between these two maps is that they are quite a bit distance apart in the real world and they didn't want you to have to ride between these two areas constantly to get to where you needed to go. So you will fast travel between these maps when changing. And I asked the lead game designer, you know, what is it about Kingdom Come Deliverance that sets it apart from other games out there? Why did it sell 6 million copies? Why is it kind of a cult classic in a way? Why are there so many fans of this genre or this game? And the reason behind that, I was told, was because it's a very old school RPG in a very polished modern shell, right? Like it has a lot of that feeling of old school gaming. And I totally agree with this, that there's a lot of freedom to do what you want to do. And the main character, Henry, is very relatable. You're not the chosen one. You're not some divine character that was chosen by, you know, something in order to fulfill a destiny. You're just an ordinary character in exceptional circumstances that's trying to succeed in a game. And one of the other things that, you know, really was impressed upon me was that failure is a huge part of Kingdom Come Deliverance and Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. You're expected to fail at certain things within the game and there are punishments for failing. Either, you know, you get arrested, have to pay a fine, or now you might have to do penance, go to like holy areas in the game to pray to be forgiven. That is one thing you might be able to do to get your crimes forgiven. You might be branded now as like a thief or something like that, and that can affect your gameplay. People might respond to you differently if they see the thief brand it positively or negatively, depending on what you're trying to do. So I think it's the freedom and the fact that quests will happen, you know, with or without you. Like one example that was provided to me was like, you know, if the guards enlist you to help them capture somebody that's been a menace in the town and they set off to do that, but you don't go with them when they come back, they'll be mad at you and be like, why didn't you come help us, etc. So there are multiple things that can happen in this game. And you're kind of immersed into the story and part of the story, but it doesn't always seem like it's revolving around you and characters have their own agendas, etc. And another thing that we discussed in our interview is some of the really cool things about Kingdom Come Deliverance. And one of them that really caught my attention and really stuck with me is that none of the NPCs in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 are spawned in, meaning that if you like go to Kutenberg, for instance, and you find a person there and you steal their clothes or something like that, the next time you see them, they'll have no clothes, right? Like they will continue to be in that state. Like they'll see you and they'll be like, ah, oh, get away from me or something. They'll remember you, they will dislike you. Or another example that was given to me is that like, if you are about to commit a crime and you go into the guardhouse and steal all the guards gear before you do it, then when they come after you, they won't have any gear to attack you with. Or if you go to like a tournament and you're about to fight in it, but you poison all the contestants, 
then you win the tournament. Or maybe you steal all their gear before the tournament starts, and now when they begin the tournament, there's no gear for them to use. The game remembers everything that you do and responds to it. And it allows tons of freedom in the way that you can do things because you know, normally in most games, if you went and stole the guard's gear or something, they would just have it again, right? Like it wouldn't remember, but the game remembers all of this stuff, giving you a very lifelike and realistic environment to play in with a lot of creativity. And when I asked about what's different in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 versus Kingdom Come Deliverance Wise 1 in terms of mechanics, you know, what I was told is that they were really working on proving the core systems of the game. They didn't want to change anything too much because they were really happy with the way the Kingdom Come Deliverance played, but they're really focusing on the core systems, especially combat. It's going to be similar, but they're trying to lower the skill floor in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 so that it's easier for people to get into the combat and succeed in combat, but there's still that very high skill ceiling where you can do combos and perfect strikes. And they also mentioned that they're trying to reward aggressive play a bit more in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 when it comes to combat instead of playing defensively. They've also added crossbows into the game. There are different crossbows that are historically accurate and each type of crossbow has its own pros and cons, whether that's has better range or more power or less accuracy, depending on what you're using it for. Maybe it takes more or less time to reload. And they also have a new mini game that allows you to craft your own swords or equipment. And you'll actually, during this mini game, like have to pay attention to what you're doing in order to get good results. But it'll allow you to craft gear that you can then sell and make money. And that will be added to the game as well. And another thing that we discussed in our interview is in Kingdom Come Deliverance 1, there was a huge focus on Henry being an ordinary guy. And when you first started Kingdom Come Deliverance, you sucked. Like your character wasn't good at anything. And you really felt that while you were playing. You were if you attacked like two dudes, you were going to die. Like you just didn't have the skill. And as you played the game and you got better and better, like horse riding got easier, archery got easier. And you really felt like you were going from someone who just sucked at, you know, doing anything to someone who could master the arts of things. And not everyone caught on to that. Some people at the beginning of that game kind of felt like, why am I so bad at this game? But the reality was you just had to get better at it. And this is really interesting because in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, they still want you to have that same feeling with Henry, but now Henry's, you know, gone through a bit of life from the previous game. So they've kind of had to get creative in terms of how they're going to recreate that feeling and make it lore accurate because it's not like he's just going to forget everything he learned. So you will have some of the things you learned from Kingdom Come Deliverance 1 at the beginning of Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, but there are a couple things that they mentioned to me. For instance, even though Henry was very strong in like a smaller scale villages and things like this, when you move to the big city of Kutenberg, it's kind of like being he was a big fish in a small pond, and now he's just a fish in a big pond. So there are people that are going to be stronger and better than him in this new area. So he will have to rise to their level. They also mentioned that there is something lore-wise or story-related-wise that didn't go into the details that will sort of explain why he's not quite as powerful as you think he would be at the beginning of this game. Other things we got into, lockpicking. I know this is a popular one. Lockpicking was not exactly the greatest in Kingdom Come Deliverance when it launched. It's been patched subsequently into a, I would say, a better state. It's not nearly as challenging. Still, some people out there don't quite like the way it is now in Kingdom Come Deliverance 1. But I did confirm that in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, lockpicking will be the same version, more or less, that is currently present in Kingdom Come Deliverance 1 after they're patched to it, but it'll have a little bit different of a UI, so it won't look quite the same, although the mechanics should be more or less the same. So if you're happier with the newer version of lockpicking in Kingdom Come Deliverance, then you should be happy with that. If you haven't tried that because you haven't played Kingdom Come Deliverance in a long time, then you might want to check that out. Additionally, one of the things that I asked about was saving the game. This was one of the things in the game that there was a little bit controversial because you had to craft a potion, brew it, and then save. And this led to hilarious moments for me personally. I, every time I could save, I would immediately go on a murder spree and just do all kinds of things knowing that I could save immediately thereafter. But this will still be present in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. You will more or less have to craft a potion that will then allow you to save. They did mention to me that there will be more resources making it easier to craft this potion and that the game will auto save more than the first game because they don't want anyone being punished for dying you know, and having to go back multiple hours of their save because that's not fun. But they also wanted to leave in an element of, you know, intenseness when you're like about to go steal something from someone or get into a fight that there's some tension there that if you lose, you might have to reload a little ways back. So they didn't want to completely remove that. So it's going to be somewhat similar, but it should be a little bit easier to save than it was in the first game. Another thing that we discussed at length was bugs. Kingdom Come Deliverance 1 had a lot of bugs at launch of the game and 
this is something that, you know, Warhorse really acknowledged in our interview, and they said that it was probably their biggest concern or the thing that affected their game experience the most. And it's something that they're having a huge focus on this time around. And they said to me that the game is probably as polished as Kingdom Come Deliverance 1 was right now when Kingdom Come Deliverance launched. So they still have all the time between now and launch to polish it even further. And they said that they've changed the way underlying systems work in order to detect bugs more easily. They're spending more time on fixing bugs and detecting bugs with, you know, players play testing the game, etc. So they have a huge focus on this and they still have many months of this to go. So they seem pretty confident that it's going to be a lot better than last time in terms of bugs. And they absolutely acknowledge that this was a huge problem for Kingdom Come Deliverance. And I thought that was great that they were just really aware of it and they're really focusing on that part this time. And another thing I asked about was modding. I know modding was a huge part of Kingdom Come Deliverance, but not until many months post-launch. And I wanted to know whether modding would be supported for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. And Warhorse basically acknowledged that modding support for Kingdom Come Deliverance 1 came a little bit too late in their mind. And they they absolutely want people to be able to mod the game, but they didn't couldn't go into details about when that might be available for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, except to say that they're aware of it and that you know, they couldn't promise anything or any timelines, but that they are aware. And the last thing we discussed was performance. I know performance is a hot topic right now coming off Dragon's Dogma 2 and a slew of other games over the last couple years that have been fantastic games, but have had performance issues. So we got into, you know, how is Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 shaping up in terms of performance? They were very, very candid with me saying that, you know, it seems to run very well on the average computer. And if you have a very good computer, it's going to run very, very well for you. It seems to be running very smoothly. They said that it probably wouldn't be like 160 FPS or anything like that, but that it's in a very playable, runnable state and pretty stable, and that they were pretty happy with the way it's coming out on PC at the moment, and they expect PC players to have a pretty smooth experience. And of course, they're still polishing it and still working on it over the next few months, you know, up until launch of the game in order to make it even better than it is now. If you didn't know, the Kingdom Come Deliverance and Kingdom Deliverance 2 are running on the Cry engine, which is the engine they still use, and it's a very modified version of this. They've customized it for their needs for Kingdom Come Deliverance, and it's an engine that still looks amazing, in my opinion. If you go look at the graphics of Kingdom Come Deliverance, which is one of the best-looking games of its time when it came out, it still has phenomenal graphics, and I'm expecting Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 to look even better than the first one. And the, my really only concern here is when we got into conversation about how it performs on console. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is also going to be coming out on Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5, so current gen, not last gen consoles. And they mentioned to me that there wouldn't be a fidelity mode or a performance mode, and that they only have one mode for the game, and that they're working as hard as they can to get performance on consoles to be the best it can possibly be. And when I asked them if it was reaching 60 FPS currently, they said that they are not currently reaching 60 FPS on consoles, but they are working as hard as they can, and they will continue to do that over the next several months to get up to 60. They didn't mention to me how many FPS they were getting or you know, what the average was or anything like that, but they were very open and transparent about the fact that their one of their biggest challenges is really trying to reach 60 FPS on current gen consoles. And they even mentioned that they might add another mode on PS5 Pro, depending on what the performance of that is when it comes out in order to take advantage of that hardware, but they didn't get into a lot of specifics of that. So that kind of wraps up our video on Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. I hope you guys learned a lot of stuff in this video that you probably won't have seen in their presentation, or probably if you watched other videos on Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. We really took our opportunity to ask some very candid questions, and I think Warhorse was very transparent with their answers, which I really, really appreciated. This is a game that I am super excited for. Kingdom Come Deliverance was a breath of fresh air when it came out, and one of the things that you don't really expect from an open world game like Kingdom Come Deliverance is to have such a good story. The story of that game really pulled me in and really pulled me through that open world, and it was just a pleasant surprise, and I cannot wait to see where the story goes in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, and just to be able to explore an even larger map and get lost in it. So what do you guys make of Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, learning these things? Did you know about this from other videos out there coming out today, or is this something you didn't know? What do you guys think? Are you going to be playing Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 later this year? Are you excited for it? Let me know in the comments below.